18th chapter of Nyaneshwari Bhagavad Gita commentary given by Nyaneshwar Maharaj called Bhavartha Deepika and we are looking at the 53rd verse of the 18th chapter Ahankaram balam darpa kamam krodham parigraham vimuchya nirma mashanto brahma bhoyaya kalpate we are on the 166th OV uh, uh, of his commentary. Where are we now? Mm-hmm. Here. So we have been looking at what are the adjustments that we need to make within ourselves uh, uh, so that we can be who we actually are not who we imagine who we are and for that the adjustment is we have to give up ahankar ego balam excessive strength or uh, stubbornness in that sense uh, darpa uh, what was darpa darpa was hypocrisy na huh? or arrogance darpa was arrogance Kama is desire, Krodh is uh, anger, Parigram is accumulation and we have to give up, Vimuchya, give up, Nirmama, me and mine, this also needs to be given up and as a, uh, and when we have given these up, automatically what is left behind is peace, Shantaha, uh, Brahma Bhuyaya Kalpate, in that calm, quiet, peaceful mind contemplate on the reality. When mind is full busy, we can't contemplate because where do we catch him? Where do you catch the moon on the waters of the ocean? Do you catch him in this wave or that wave or this wave or that wave? But where the waves has become quiet, the moon, the reflection of the moon is available and exactly the same way. And then, then there is a possibility, once you access the reflected moon, then you know this reflection is of the original, then you can move to the or be the original. There it is, moon is out there in the sky, the reflection is in the water. Here, you are the mind, you are the self, you are the ego, you are the reflection. <laughs> Which one are you expect accepting yourself to be? And for that, we need to slow down or uh, dissolve uh, all these that were mentioned in the 53rd verse and here in uh, 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 where are we uh, uh, i think we did it did up till 1 1063 and 1064 shishya shastra di vilase madhadi mudre te nimise ghatale ahati fase Nisangazene, our tune has changed. Ghari kutumba pane sare, Tari vani vanyaho ni avatare, Nagaviahi shari re, Lagala ahe. So he says here that because, 
just as a person in authority makes the offender carry the stock in which his ankles are to be bound on his head so his enemy by name position acha we didn't do uh, we didn't do this one right yes, we did, we did? Yeah. okay uh, so his enemy by name position rides on his head and here we talked about position parigraha not only of the objects of the world but also of memories of desires of attachments of identifications and where do you begin this identification of position i am the body is the first position i am the mind is a position by by the i that without this i have got no identity oh my god i will die this is not so so you are the infinite one imagining yourself to be the finite one and that's why all the problems that's why all the survival that's why all the hardship we saw last week that what is the the ego if we have to dissolve ahankar what was ahankar ego accumulated past so consciously stop thinking about the past it's not worth it it's dead and gone it's not going to mag if at all it does come up in your mind learn from it and move on and what is it to be learned ask the question for whom is this a memory uh, for me uh, who am i story over it will vanish but if you give it attention if you give it value if you give it a part importance if you dwell over it for a moment or more then that memory leads to another memory then leads to another memory and uh, before you know you are living in a you are in a imaginary space so rides on his head corrupts his mind makes him addicted to vices and compels him to carry the stock of attachment i explained this in detail last class that it is the memory which expresses as desire under the right conditions it is the memory that when you are going on the road and you smell the 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 fragrance of pizza the desire for pizza arises or you smell the coffee when you are walking in a shopping center the de- desire for coffee arises you don't drink normally at 12 o'clock who drinks coffee uh, peop- there may be people i'm talking about myself i don't drink coffee but if i am going there uh, someone's come it's open ha ah. but at that moment because uh, the fragrance is there suddenly the appetite is wetted for that desire is uh, comes up for that particular for that coffee and you may then it is not the right time this that but go round and round and eventually you land up there <laughs> so this is what memory does this is what possession of experiences does and we must try and dissolve these memories how how do you dissolve the memories by living in the present and other example uh, other way i gave you if memories do appear in your mind then for whom are these memories for me question should be then who am i and immediately go in that direction rather than in in, in the outward direction because of possession even a detached ascetic becomes entangled in the snares in the form of this is my disciple na uh, this is my book this is my hermitage that possession which i was shaken off after leaving the family appears in the form of silvan things in the forest and pursues even a nude ascetic yeah i gave all the examples for this that vishwamitra example i gave and all so i don't need to go over it continuing in the 1066 words ai sa durjayo jo parigraho taya cha feedu ni thavo bhav vijaya cha utsaho bhogi tase jo teth amanitwaadi aaghave gnana guna che je melave te kaivalya deshi che aaghave raho jai se aale तेव्हा सम्यक ज्ञानाची या राणी वा उगाणूनी तया परिवारू होऊन या राहत आगे प्रवृत्तीची राजबिंदी अवस्था भेद प्रमदी की जत आहे प्रतिपदी सुखाचे लोण पुढा बोधाची काबिंबरी 
विवेको दृश्याची मांदी सारी योग भूमिका आरती करी ये ती जय सिया दॅट बाय नॉकिंग ऑफ द बॉटम ऑफ दिस इनविन्सिबल एनिमी नेम्ड पोजिशन द एक्सपिरियन्स इज द जॉय ऑफ विक्ट्री ओवर वर्ल्डली लाईफ then all the means of knowledge such as such as absence of pride and others come to pay homage to him like princes in the country of liberation it is the memory that that person did not respect me in that particular environment i got lot of uh, importance hmm? this happens if a king goes somewhere and he is not given a position australia is different prime minister hi might <laughs> india if you say hi might <laughs> it is an unaccepted you have to say sir or uh, still the left over of the british honorable huh? honorable prime minister here also they say but when you meet person to person it is hi might hi scott hey scotty <laughs> Huh? you can't do that to modi <laughs> it will not be ta- it is not the accepted norm so so there is, when you get used to suppose as a as a sanyasi many places i get undue advantage <laughs> if i go to temples or i go to uh, some some uh, someone's house uh, and lot of people are there suddenly the host comes and swami ji swami ji swami ji they take me and they will give me the uh, uh, the, the the important chair there or some in some houses it happens and other people will, who is this fellow he is also looking like us he is also a person why he is giving getting so much importance and if people may think that way but am i thinking that way that is it important to get the important seat or not the important seat not to be recognized or to be recognized see if so how what is that dependent on that is dependent on memory if i have collect when that incident has taken place where i have been given importance if i have taken it as a memory then that memory will create an desire what will be that desire an expectation in the in such events i must be given such importance isn't it it's memory we are we are looking at parigraha collection of memories and this is the 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 uh, error or this is the virus that sets in expectation then and therefore here he says that all the ego uh, arrogance and what was the other ahankaram strength all that is strength is also yes there is one strength which is the atmic strength but one strength is of the mind mind strength is stubbornness mind strength is duragra insistence mind strength is will power see and if that will power is employed in the wrong places then uh, <coughs> that will be based on memories also so all these three can be dissolved can be neutralized if we as he is saying here that if we uh, by knocking off the bottom <coughs> of this invincible enemy named possession don't possess anything that's why it is told tyage nahi ke amritatva maasho immortality is gained only by giving up giving up means renunciation renunciation of possessions physical attachments relationships possessions memories expectations and when a person has done that 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 is sanyas and we must move in that direction what have we been able to catch till today nothing we have been able to catch then what are we living in this imaginary world it is my body it is my life it is my property it is my investment it is my my memories it is my friends it is my nobody is there who is there for ukraine right now they all triggered him and now his uh, poor fellow is all by himself with this country there was no need if he had just mention if he had to agree to all the terms of russia why did he start the war 
देखो एंड ब्रिंग ऑलमोस्ट टू मिलियन रेफ्यूजीज एंड कंट्री हाफ द कंट्री इज बॉम्ड इन टू रबल फॉर वॉट वॉट फॉर प्राइड और स्टबननेस सी I am not any person to judge. I am just making the point from if it if it relates to it, and therefore um, he experiences the joy of victory over worldly life. What is our joy over victory life? When we have enough to eat, we have enough to travel, we have enough to do whatever we desire. That we call as victory over in this worldly life. that i don't have to think two times if i can drink a coffee or not i don't have to think twice i want to go to india i'm going many people have that capacity so you are in heaven your desires are satisfied straight away that is victory over life but people think that is what life is life is much more than that and don't get And these are only temporary excitements of being able to do what you like what you want and having the capacity to carry it out it's not a it's not the lasting joy that it will provide and therefore uh, the worldly life then all the means of knowledge such as absence of pride and others come to pay homage to him like princes in the country of liberation so when we have become a renunciate when we have learned not to possess any of those what we mention then the the arrogance then the strength the ego everyone pays homage meaning it comes and surrenders at the altar of the self at the altar of the atman here it is said at the altar of at the feet of liberation at the abode of liberation whichever way you put it because they have they what they are surviving on that itself you have taken away <laughs> if you have taken away attachment to possession and you are not they can their food is gone their food is gone arrogance food is gone strength food is gone arrogance food is gone when he proceeds along the highway of activity young ladies in the form of wakefulness dream and deep sleep wave around him salt and mustard in the form of pleasure this is now going into the subtle as your mind becomes purified as these anomalies if we may use the word uh, ego uh, st- mental strength and the strength of the desire uh, and uh, the arrogance and uh, possession as these become weaker and weaker the mind starts throwing up more beautiful things <laughs> what is that all the hidden memories the subconscious memories either we can put it that way or the waking dream deep sleep as your mind is becoming calm you are still seeing you are observing yourself that am i awake am i dreaming am i sleepy you will become right now it is a, a you are caught up in the cycle of waking dream and sleep and you don't even think about them you think more about Oh, going to satsang going to work eating breakfast lunch dinner taking care of children taking care of your health going for a walk this is where you engage yourself but when the mind is calm and these anomalies have settled to a large extent then you will become available not to these uh, daily uh, rut but now you are available to re man even the waking is coming dream is coming and going am i attached to waking am i attached to some imaginary dream am i looking forward to go to sleep they start dancing in front in the mind because they are nothing but expressions of mind alone they are project expression projections of the mind the waking dream and deep sleep 
So here he says, when he proceeds along the highway of activity, young ladies in the form of wakefulness, dream and deep sleep, wave around him salt and mustard in the form of pleasure. As uh, this is the uh, this is the challenge. As the mind becomes pure, that purity, that focus, that concentration, that ekagra chitta, uh, the focused mind. If you get distracted from the goal of liberation or the self, if you give an iota of value to any thought in the waking, in the dream, in the sleep, of the sleep, all that focus goes in that direction. And it brings about a fall, it brings about a distraction. You may realize that immediately or you may realize it after many lives. <laughs> Choice is yours. With what intensity you interacted but your intensity of interaction with the whatever is happening in the waking dream and deep sleep, intensity is only one. With what intensity are you seeking the self? That same intensity is available. When you give value to anything in waking dream and deep sleep, same intensity is available. Are you able to practice discrimination at that moment? If you are, then you are safe. But if you are not, then you are six are <laughs> out of the out of the game of uh, seeking. You are caught up in the world. Then observe this in your life. Observe this in your life. In the form of pleasure. And that time we have to practice the discrimination. World is waking experiences, throwing pleasures at us. Dream experiences, throwing pleasures at us. Deep sleep itself is a great pleasure where mind is completely quiet. Are we looking forward to any of these? Then we are committing sabotage. We have to remain alert and vigilant in and through these experiences. And how do you remain alert and vigilant? not alert and vigilant about these experiences, alert and vigilant of the self without whom these experiences cannot appear. What is the source to whom it is coming rather than what is coming <laughs> to whom? That is our uh, focus. As he proceeds along discrimination, uh, as he proceeds along, discrimination marches ahead of him bearing the scepter in his hand and clears the crowd in the form of manifest things of the world. Exactly what I said that he is he, at this moment because you cannot stop waking dream and deep sleep. They come to a realized master also. Then what are you, are you, what are you doing? You are, here is Naneshwar Maharaj saying, you are using the sword of discrimination and cutting away that which is not conducive to your poise, conducive to your contemplation, conducive to be, to the introvertedness. See, in our Kathopanishad also same thought came that the Atman is surrounded by multitude of, uh, 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 what do you call, uh, multitude of, uh, okay, let's put it this way. The diamond, where is the diamond found? In coal mines. It is surrounded by coal. You have to chip away the coal, only then you will get the diamond. Similarly, this Atman, where is it? Where is it found? Right now you are an individual, you are seeking through the mind by focusing on the I, which is essentially the reflected consciousness, which is nothing but the infinite consciousness. So your focus is on that one. But while you are going to moving towards that, accepting yourself to be that, focused on that, there are many distractions of the world. And they do, whether you like it or not, they do grab your attention every now and then. 
right now you are focused on the on the words this is unwanted this is one at a relative level it is a good data which is coming to you but at a for a very highly contemplative person who has got no doubt as regards his self that he is convinced all this data is is uh, the, the black hole <laughs> it is unnecessary it's unnecessary data because he is already clear third way third way is okay we are in a satsang let the data come it is good it is bhagavad gita it is it's not that i'm indulging in something wrong in a unwanted serial or a movie or a novel so what do i do while the data is coming i remain in the poise undisturbed by the data undisturbed by the data and that's the focus to whom the data is coming who is listening who is understanding understanding will automatically take place but to whom our focus must be our attention must be on that one and that is told here as he proceeds along discrimination as he proceeds along discrimination marches ahead of him bearing the skep the scepter or sword in its hand and clears the crowd in the form of manifest things of the world why only this is manifest things of the world only in the waking what about dream there also so many beautiful things can come you can have experience of the heaven or the hell in the dream see so all these are nothing but projections of the mind as much as dream is a projection of the mind waking is also a projection of the mind we must move through this waking dream and deep sleep as if giving zero value to them and this way then the yogic stages as it were come forward to wave the tiny lamps placed on a platter to facilitate him see what is this worldly crowd that is coming to him which he is cutting with the sword of discrimination it is yama live in such a manner in the world that you do not disturb the world nor get disturbed by the world first step of yoga second you do not get disturbed by your own thoughts and your own habits where are your thoughts and habits in your mind from gross the outer world you have come to the inner world then what is the third stage in yoga asan what is asan sukha asit iti asanam when outer world is not disturbing your inner world is not disturbing you are at in peace you are you are settled in peace you are sitting in peace that is true asan but people are focused on the body so they do all the asanas of the body if you do these three steps clearly from the asan you jump straight to where dharana dhyana samadhi this straight you don't need to do pranayam pratyahar these two are steps why because you didn't do the first two properly <laughs> you can put it that way continuing uh ha huh. and in this calm mind in this quiet mind in this undisturbed mind then the various experiences on the on the inward journey they present themselves huh uh where are we 170 one, 1071 hmm. te tharuddhi siddhi chi anege vrunde milati prasange tie pushpa varshi ange na hatase to aise ni brahmaikya sarike swaraj yeta javalike jhalambit ahe harike 
तीन ही लोक तेव्हा वैरिया का मैत्रिया तयासी माझे म्हणावी वया समानता धनंजया उरेची ही ना हे ना भल तेणे व्याजे तो जया ते म्हणे माझे ते नोडवेची का दुजे अद्वितीय झाला भय आपुलिया एकी सत्ता सर्व ही कवळू निया पंडुसुता कही न लगती ममता धाडिली तेणे द मिरॅक्युलस पॉवर्स कम देअर टू बेद हिम विद अ शॉवर ऑफ फ्लावर्स वेर आर ऑल दीज पॉवर्स वेर आर ऑल दीज पॉवर्स आर दे इन द स्पिरिट और आर दे इन द मॅटर वेर आर ऑल दीज पॉवर्स द सिद्धीज इन द मॅटर मॅटर इज माइंड दे आर इन द माइंड as mind becomes calmer and calmer and calmer the inner potential these are all as the mind ka- ka- calm remember these few things calm mind is equal to focused mind so focused mind is equal to calm mind without the i then calm uh, uh, what did i say focused mind is equal to calm mind calm mind is equal to okay alert mind you can say what else what else is it is equal, equal to expanded mind expanded mind thank you amma oh, someone is listening <laughs> focused mind is equal to calm mind or pure mind is equal to expanded mind so where, where is it expanding from individuality to totality and as this expansion unknown to you it is happening because all you are focusing on is calmness the mind is automatically the possibilities the hidden possibilities the hidden powers they st- as the mind is expanding we don't allow it to expand we are continuously crystallizing it me and mine and my past and my future and my children and my position and i uh, i don't want to die and my health and my hunger and this is crystallization as you let loose as you dissolve all these attachments all these positions within the mind that idea that we have about ourselves that i am this alone this idea where does it go away only in meditation it goes away isn't it so work towards it vaikhari madhyama pashyanti so as you are moving from vaikhari gross chanting to subtle chanting to uh, causal chanting to transcendental chanting your mind is becoming calm mind is becoming focused mind is expanding and automatically in these the symptoms of siddhis powers they start expressing how long as long as you are practicing <laughs> you stop practicing they'll go away see the miraculous powers come there to bathe him with a shower he is not desiring he is only purifying but the powers come and offer themselves to such a person with the up, uh, with a shower of flowers with the approach of self government in the form of union with supreme brahman uh, the uh, he feels as if all the three worlds are full of bliss in this state o dhananjaya there remains none with whom he can call as his friend or as his enemy uh, today i got a call sms he is a old friend how when i met him i met him in 1993 90 9394 he is a greek fellow met him in a meditation seminar a seminar means i i was faci- i was helping the facilitator in adelaide hills yoa is still a good friend now he must be 74 75 and uh, there i met him so he keeps smsing every now and then today he smsed early in the morning what is the sms 
if I can remember it. He says that he is not asking about himself. He says a general question, but I know it is his only. <laughs> he says, if one is realized, is there any duty left for a realized person to perform? Should he teach? Should he inspire people uh, to, to get realized? And then he talked about celibacy that I am not I am practicing it. It is the celibacy is happening. I am not practicing it, and so on and so forth. So then, when I read that, what did I write? One who is realized will have no questions. One who is realized can have no questions. Why? His and his his being is I alone am. So there is no other. There is no duality. Questions come only where there is duality. See? So where is the question of teaching? Where is the question of improving the world? Yes, I wrote to him that there are people in, Mah in Himalayas who are sitting there. They don't want to go and teach. Because the whole world is a projection of our mind. Once you accept that, once you understand that this is the phenomena that is taking place, then what can you improve? Then will I feel guilty if I don't come to a class? No. My projection only, I, uh, in my projection, I took a particular form and I went to give the class and then I feel guilty. A foolish fellow. <laughs> but this is how it is. <laughs> this is how it is. This is how we wake up from a dream. Our mind projected the dream. In that dream, it projected a particular event and that event didn't go the way it was supposed to go and you wake up. <laughs> Isn't it? So you are getting woken up by your own thoughts, your own events, which you created. <laughs> See the fun. So same thing here. See how examples come to me. <laughs> Every day something or the other like that. So, uh, O Dhananjaya, uh, with the approach of self-government in the form of union with Supreme Brahman, self-governance. Self-governance means when your mind is governed by the self. That is, Right now, if your mind is hooked into the world, we have to replace it by giving regular attention towards the self, discriminating the real between real and unreal, changing and changeless. And let it, and once the mind is calm and you are contemplating, it will get hooked on the self. And that's what this fellow was saying. He says, I am calm, immaterial, I got no desire. It doesn't work. Lives in some place in um, our, where? Somewhere near Sydney. He spends, spends time in, uh, uh, in silence. One person less problematic in the world. <laughs> huh? <laughs> you know Jim? Yes. Ah, him. Uh, nice fellow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So he keeps sending every now and then, every few months he will send something because something, his mind gets caught up in that, suddenly he gets clarity. Then he says, I read your response and everything is absolutely clear to me without a doubt. Thank you. <laughs> that is also important. What you have understood and what I have said, uh, that also can be <laughs> miles apart, you know. So self-governance is when mind is hooked on to the self, you as an individual, you as a seeker are governed by the self. You are governed by your family. You are governed by your family. So your mind has you as a person, you as a individual has given importance to the family and 
you have given importance to the satsang you have given importance to food you have given importance to the social responsibilities so you are playing a you know that uh, 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 rope walker Th- that ga- that game you are playing in life you want to keep everyone happy you want to keep the children happy you want to keep the society happy you want to keep the government happy you want to keep the neighbors happy you want to keep the husband happy you want to keep the parents happy it's a it's a tight rope and every now and then you fall and then uh, arguments fights misunderstandings these things happen but there's no solution to this when we are at, uh, our, our attention is on this it, there will never be a time that it will be all peaceful out there in the world it's always a flux sometimes peace sometimes no peace but when we are hooked on to the so when we are hooked then whatever we are hooked on that that prompts the activity out of us understand whatever you are convinced of whatever you are hooked on to whatever you are attached to that prompts all the desires and activities out of you now you are hooked on to the self you are desiring the self you are desiring the infinite then all activities in and through all the activities you will find a way to come back to the self in other words with every thought with every emotion with every activity for whom is it for the for me who am i back to the source this is called self governance right now it is happening when satsang is if it may happen other times when you are meditating etc but we want it 24 by 7 oh dhananjaya there remains none whom he can call as his friend or as his enemy even if he calls one or one on a rare occasion as his friend even then he entertains no idea of duality huh? now when as you are coming close as the mind is coming to this realization realization is for the mind and what is the realization for the mind that i am essentially consciousness that consciousness which is nothing but which which alone is expressing as mind but mind is where duality is so i is conscious and uh, the, that is also expression of consciousness but in a solidified state <laughs> we say i is uh, consciousness but when we identify with that gross subtle or causal then we have the waker dreamer and sleeper these are only three expressions of the mind three projections of the mind three thoughts in the mind see so here uh, 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 where, where there remains none whom he can call as his friend or as his enemy if i am all that there is as the mind is dissolving everything and coming to be the consciousness then where is the friend where is the enemy there is no otherness only there is no otherness because all differences have become a not they have become zero he has become so and if in case he does call such a person such a person who is so self contemplating or abiding in the self we see mahatma as l a r come let's go together even if he calls he doesn't call thinking that the other person is other to him he is calling himself alone and it all happens intuitively not out of any planning not out of any planning he entertains no idea of duality he has become so identified with all people so in other words he is not got identified with the people out there he has got identified with the consciousness that he is and what is this consciousness 
sahasra shirsha purushaha it is that consciousness which is expressing behind every eye behind every ear behind all the senses behind all, not senses of mind all the senses of all the people all the minds of all the people and every living being including mosquito so it is not that i can go and physically be one with you and one with you and one with you that is that is the cause of rebirth attachment is the cause of rebirth here he has come to be the consciousness and that consciousness is one without a second that is its nature and he has uh, how do you say uh, he has come to abide in that nature so wherever he sees he sees himself wherever he sees he sees himself everything is a projection of the mind this you come to know only after waking up that everything in the dream was a projection of the mind the mind itself was the material of your whole dream this you come to know after you wake up same way when we wake up from this waking state will come to know this waking was also a projection of our mind see and if it just like that infinite reality took the form of krishna or rama or jesus or whoever all the various mahatmas realized masters we see even today then they have take that reality has taken that form and the game is going on nothing to achieve nothing to lose nothing to achieve nothing to lose but just going on your eyes are just looking they don't want anything <laughs> your vision wants nothing from what it is illuminating but it keeps on then where does all the where does the vision principle of vision go when you go to sleep it goes back to its source exactly the same way there is no purpose for the eyes to see that is it just happening ears cannot they just keep listening 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 whatever or or they don't listen we feel that the form and colors are separate to the vision we feel the sounds and the ear are separate to each other this is what our understanding is wrong conclusion according to our scriptures the source of all light colors and forms is our vision because there is vision therefore the colors and forms are there not the other way round but when we see a blind person we say oh this poor fellow this that that he is lucky <laughs> his other faculties are anyway that's not the point here he has pervaded the whole universe by his majesty with the result that no attachment of the form uh, this is mine this is mine affects him for he has given up attachment already so what i said sahasra shirsha purusha now from being an individual he has become total the way when you touch the wave you are touching the individual wave you are touching the total ocean and you are touching the infinite waters understand this is a very good example similarly when you think of yourself are you thinking of the individual person are you thinking yourself to be the total person or are you thinking your are you being i can't even say thinking being are you being the infinite absolute reality are you being the individual consciousness are you being the total consciousness or are you being the infinite consciousness wave ocean and water all present at the same time question is where is your attention what are you hooked on to what have you accepted yourself to be are you accepting yourself to be 
on account of all the data that is out there because the world is there therefore this body is or the world is there because I am then if that is the case that the world is there because I am then who am I let me find out because world can never let me come the world has got no capacity to tell me has no potential to tell me who I am I have to find out myself self is self knowing oh then I have to get to that and then who is coming in between mind Chalo, let's dissolve the mind work towards it <laughs> work towards it we don't work towards dissolving the mind and yet our experience of ecstatic bliss is only when the mind is dissolved in sleep we feel at peace we feel tranquil we feel rejuvenated we feel uh, at one with ourselves only in deep sleep isn't it no load Can we recreate that when we are awake? Yeah. Is there a possibility that we move through waking dream and deep sleep and not be disturbed by it? We see it as, when, when will you be not disturbed by it? When you see it as a projection of yourself, expression of yourself. Or you see it as another aspect of yourself. The consciousness here that I am alone is present everywhere through everyone. And how is it expressing that consciousness? In inert objects it's expressing as existence, Sat. In living people and beings and animals and humans it is expressing as Sat and Chit. Some people have unique third eye they see cats smiling and dogs smiling that is leave that category apart <laughs> but uh, among the human beings we have sat chit and anand so is our anand coming from association with objects memories attachments possessions or is it coming from surrender to the lord to the higher planes of consciousness or have we come to realize we are the source of bliss, we are of the nature of bliss, that will be the infinite, isn't it? How more clearly the whole pathway can be presented to us? There is no error in it. Find it. And this is, this is exactly what every scripture is telling us. We have to find the inspiration to follow the path. We have, we have to find the, we must have the inspiration to be the infinite one. Don't be afraid. This is, this is mine. Affects him for he has given up attachment already. Meaning the mine is for all the positions, remember whatever your attachments and possessions this is mine this is mine you are what are you doing with that you are crystallizing yourself you are uh, your identity identity is being determined by what you are attached to and when that happens uh, that's your fall continuing 176 1076 I sazintilia ripu vargu, apamanilia hezagu, apaisa yoga turangu, stirazala, vairagyace gardhale, angi trana hote bhale, tehi nave kadhile, tevhakari, arni nevati dhyanace khande, te duze nahici pudhe, manauni hatu asude, Rutti chahi, zai se rasau shadhakare, apule kaza karo nipure, apanahi nure, 
तई से हो तसे भेखो नी ठा किता ठावो धावता थेरा वे पावो तई सा ब्रह्म समीप्ये थावो अभ्यासु सांडी He says, thus having conquered all his enemies, he regards the whole universe as a non-entity and then the horse in the form of his yogic practice on which he was riding becomes steady. Why are horses unsteady? What is the horse? Mind is considered to be the horse. Huh? There is an example given. What is that? How do you break a horse? <laughs> How do you break a horse? Horses are found in the wild. We are not talking about a horse bred in captivity. A wild horse. How do you break a horse so that you can ride it? So that it follows what you want it to do. First you corner it and bring it into an enclosure. After getting enclosure, somehow get him into the uh, into one room and keep him hungry for some days and every day only one person not two three different people one person he goes shows himself goes away he is not giving him food water uh, when he is very thirsty he will give we were talking about breaking starving him not out of uh, what do you call animal cruelty or anything and then he gives a little bit food from far away. He took, pushes it towards him. Because if he goes, he will kick him. Again he goes and gives it. Every day he keeps doing it. Now the horse starts expecting that at a particular time the food is going to come. And he is looking forward. When is this fellow going to come? <laughs> and the moment he comes, he becomes. And slowly a relationship is getting created between the master and the horse. After a few months of this going on, one day, because now he, he trusts the master and one day he puts the rope around his uh, neck and that also takes some time and one day he takes him out into the, what do you call it? I don't. I never heard that name. Manaj. Yes, that's what it's called. That that uh, that ground circle. circle. Yeah. Oh. So he brings him that, but there, and the moment this horse sees the open ground, he runs because he has been in captivity for such a long time, and all the energy, the frustration, and everything comes out. But the rope is in the hand of the master. He allows him to run. Where will he run? It is enclosed. So long rope and the horse is going round and round till he gets exhausted. And when he gets exhausted, he takes him back him, takes him back into his uh, enclosure. Again, keeps few days, food, water, food, water. Again, he brings out again. But the second time he comes, the rope is a little bit shorter. <laughs> Third time he brings out, rope is shorter, shorter shorter. What is happening? The distance between the master and the horse is becoming shorter and shorter and shorter. Then one day as the horse is running, the master is also running with him. Tick, 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 tick. He's running. And while he's running, when he sees that the horse is not agitated by his presence, suddenly he will jump onto the bare back of the horse and quickly come down before he can throw him off. Again, he will jump onto the back of the horse before he can stand on his feet or, uh, you know, uh, and uh, uh, throw. what is this foreign thing that has come, weight has come onto him. Quickly he jumps out. Again, he keeps, he keeps doing it for a few days. Eventually, one day, he gets onto the back of the horse. He's got the, not, not the rope now, he's got the proper, uh, you know, harness. Uh, uh, what do you call it? Reins. Reins. And the gate of the enclosure is open. And the horse runs. Suddenly he finds that hey, this is open. He runs. But the reins are in the hands of the master. 
he is sitting on the back of the horse and he allows him to run as fast that's why he is the master he stands he tries he shakes but he is steadfast and eventually the horse is broken now the horse does what the master wants him to do if he wants him to dance he will dance if he wants him to jump he will jump if he wants to run fast fast suddenly break he will break this is how our mind is controlled slowly but steadily what is the difference what is the distance between the master and the horse that is the distance between the i and the object <laughs> initially so keep reducing the distance or keep reducing the distance between the self and the mind mind wants to run away every opportunity it wants to run away keep bringing it back keep reducing the <laughs> length of the rope <laughs> and eventually it should be under our control whenever we say contemplate on the self it must contemplate at a drop of a hat it must contemplate it must sit in meditation it must go to sleep it must if i say give lecture it must give lecture uh, no question i don't feel i am tired i uh, no whatever is at hand it has to be per, it has to be done otherwise mind always finds a, a loophole and tries to escape and this is this this is what is nyaneshwar maharaj telling here thus having conquered all his enemies he regards the whole universe as a non entity and then the horse in the form of the yogic practice so here is the yogic practice what is yogic practice control don't get disturbed by the world don't get disturbed by your habits don't get disturbed by the body don't get disturbed by the breath don't get disturbed by the past or future this is the yogic practice then you come to dharana dhyan samadhi then you come to meditation so from outside we are reducing the disturbance straight away we want to start reducing the disturbance in the mind it is not possible many people want to do japa straight away in their mind no always vaikari chant loudly so same way first you can't sort the world out then what do you do with the world be indifferent to it be indifferent to it and that's why we say don't overdo spirituality 10 seconds 5 minutes 1 minute whatever is joyful to you engage that, that that for that duration you engage with your japa you engage with meditation not don't overdo but do it many times 1 minute 10 times a day is more beneficial than 15 minutes half an hour continuously in one day and then getting up frustrated pain here pain there my mind was so oh, I, i don't know i couldn't meditate but then what did you do for half an hour you tried but it was not working why it was not working because you don't have the stamina then what do you do 10 seconds you do for that you have the stamina <laughs> for one minute you do for that you have the stamina slowly increase the stamina of the mind that is bringing the horse under the control horse of the mind ha ah. so th- thus having conquered all his enemies he regards the whole universe as a non entity we give zero value to the world the whole world is in the mind when we do the first two steps yama and niyama we have con- we are not allowing the world to create a disturbance for us then what do we do then we start engaging with the world where do you engage this in the first on the seat of meditation you have this uh, uh, disposition that the whole world is of the nature of divine i want to see 
the divinity in the world. Everyone is an expression of divinity. Right now, the thief is not divine. The murderer is not divine. The one who was tailgating you is not divine. <laughs> we judge. So, in spite of that outward experience, on the seat of meditation, we keep super, uh, insisting that everything is divine. What is the way out for this? What is the way out? How do I see the whole thing as divine? Then what I told you before, that every the whole world, all the beings are conscious and I am conscious. Only by coming to the consciousness, I can come to know that the whole world is also of the divine consciousness. Because this consciousness that I am is not limited to this body. This consciousness is infinite by nature, wave, ocean or waters. On, uh, uh, in the form of yogic, then the horse in the form of yogic practice on which he was riding becomes steady. Then he loosens for a moment his impregnable armor of non-attachment and he slackens his hand as nothing remains for the sword in the form of meditation to lash. See, how long, how long you should be protective, how long you should be uh, alert and vigilant. If you are alert and vigilant, then you will never be able to sit in meditation. You are always afraid of the world entering. You are always afraid of attachment. You are always afraid of the, the identification. You are always afraid of memories. Or you are always afraid of uh, expectations. You are always afraid of waking dream and disorder. You are, then when, when will you meditate? So when you have practiced this alertness, inward focus, then you let go of that alertness. When you let go of that alertness and vigilance, that's when the mind will expand. That's when the merging will take place. Because if you are highly strung, why you were highly strung? Only so that you don't succumb to to the world. That's why you were alert. That's why you were, uh, 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 what do you call, focused. But focus is not going to give you realization. Focus is always on. There is a person who is having focus on something. But how can self have focus on self? <laughs> it is not possible. So somebody had to, so you come to a particular point and then you give up. So you are focused on mantra, for example, loud chanting, Om Namah Shiva, Om Namah Shiva, Om Namah Shiva, then mental chanting, Om Namah Shiva, Om Namah Shiva, Om Namah Shiva. Now you want to go beyond mental chanting, you have to give up. You cannot hold on to the mantra. You have to understand that, and then how do you give up from mental chanting to, to, to the source of the mental chanting? How do you do it? You catch the gap between the two mantras. Where do you catch the gap between the two mantras? Start from the outside, from the gross chanting, not in mental. See? Then what is there between the two? Neither you are with the previous chant, mantra, nor we are, you are with the upcoming mantra. You are in the gap. In gap, where is, is there any focus? There is nothing to be focused upon. There is nothing to be concentrated upon. There is nothing to be alert about. <laughs> See? Suddenly, from one moment to the next, from one moment to the next, the peace. Now practice again and again and again and again. Expose yourself to that silence again and again in this japa. So same way here he is saying, then he loosens for a moment his impregnable armor that 
the senses are not allowed to get attached to anything the mind is not allowed to get attached to the senses pratyahar pratyahar is a practice pratyahar is a practice japa is a practice there is a practitioner and there is a practice there is an object of practice but you are not an object our goal must be clear why we are doing japa only to dissolve the mind then who is shiva oh shiva and me are not separate he alone is expressing through me and i can access him and be one with him only when the mind comes goes out of the equation that is why i am chanting the mantra i am not chanting the mantra to be one with the lord i can because word cannot reach him yato vacho nivartante word cannot reach him then why am i doing the mantra to dissolve the mind be clear of this so uh, as nothing remain ha uh, then he loosens for a moment his impregnable armor of non attachment and he slackens his hand as nothing remains for the sword in the form of meditation to slash so what is what is discrimination reality versus non reality thinking of reality and keeping the non reality on on the edge focusing on the changeless and keeping the changing and remaining unaffected by the changing by focusing on the changeless this is discrimination having vairagya having renunciation towards the objects and love towards or uh, abidance towards the self but this is a practice this has to be given up <laughs> when you have to you have to give up when the time comes you will come to know not now <laughs> not now <laughs> when when we are deep in union with ourselves at that time these words will automatically come to guide you and now there is nothing to discriminate nothing to cut away huh? so you don't need the sword of discrimination anymore discrimination was happening where Intel, intellect discrimination happens in intellect and it was necessary so that we could focus on the essential principle with reference to the world now world is not disturbing you the outer world or the inner world but well, only one thought is there what the self self i am i am i am now drop that also why you have to repeat to be you don't have to think to be let it for that's that subtle adjustment it will happen when you get there right now impossible it's that same subtle adjustment you are thinking of sleep and you surrender to sleep every night you do it what is that adjustment how do you give up yourself how do you give up your ego how do you give up your waking experience how do you how do you glide into something that you do not know what adjustments you made in your mind for the mind to be absorbed into nothingness you did some adjustments every night it happens adjust your mind in such a way that it surrenders gets absorbed into consciousness that's all meaning allow the mind to be absorbed but you don't go to sleep <laughs> simple but those adjustments are same as you practice every night going to sleep be alert vigilant about what is the sequence of surrender <laughs> every night analyze it analyze your own experience you don't have to read books for that you are a book how do you bring it about every night and 
and if it is happening you don't even hey, 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 oh I, i don't want to think too much first you say don't think now you are saying think about it i don't know okay remain awake while the mind is surrendering the moment sleep is coming remain awake it's not that easy to remain awake at that moment because of our lifetimes of practice for that either you hold on to the mantra or you hold on to the breath and the moment sleep is coming many times you will go in come out go in come out go in come out but you have to keep waking up you have to what is that on the seat of meditation if inertia is coming inertia is sleep if it is coming no you cannot you are not a horse to sleep uh, sitting like this you can practice that for some time but then you will wake up then you say no i am going to remain awake and again you continue with your japa or watching your breath and you contemplation and again the sleep is coming and you try to catch at that moment try to catch that moment eventually you will be able to do go past it nothing is impossible only intention has to be pure intention has to be pure acceptance has to be there that i am not the sleeper i am the pure consciousness i am the one who is always awake so how can i go to sleep let the mind go to sleep mind going to sleep means silence so it's your self talk that also will determine it so just as the medicine after serving its purpose becomes superfluous similarly is this stay is his state just as walking comes to a halt after reaching the destination so his yogic practice stops after the attainment of brahman after so all practice stops must stop all your practice of going to sleep must stop at the altar of sleep <laughs> at the feet of sleep all your seeking must stop because seeking is signifying there is a seeker seeker has to dissolve it must stop it must dissolve it must surrender or be one with the because there is only one there is not many there is not you the consciousness and mind it is nothing like that and yet at the relative level this is how it is perceived this is how it is perceived that you are the person and mind is the instrument oh still 10 minutes so in this manner in in uh, amrut anubhav this thought comes that the word sat chet ananda they are used only to counteract asat achit and dukham misery so sat chet ananda existence consciousness and bliss are not qualities of the reality they are not attributes of the reality they are utilized by the seeker by the scriptures only to counteract existence thought why we are calling the reality the, that it is ever existing to counteract non existence why do we say the realities of the nature of consciousness that is knowledge to counteract ignorance or incomplete knowledge why do we call it bliss to counteract misery but once misery ignorance and non existence is no longer an issue for the mind then what's the point of saying satchidanand also <laughs> both of them are null and void just as you get a prick prick get pricked by a thorn you take another thorn you take out the prick 
the thorn, the prick thorn and throw both of them away exactly the same way first we first we are desiring the world now we are desiring the self and as we come to the uh, sanctum sanctorium we give up both the desires <laughs> understand the uh, the whole picture of it the principle of it because the seeker is in the mind and you are the pure consciousness who is imagining that he is a seeker continuing gadata maho dadhisi ganga vegu sandi jaisi ka kamini kanta pasi sthir hoya na na phalati e vele keli chi vaadhi matule ka gaava pudhe phal vale margu jaisa taisa atma sakshatkaru होईल देखो नि गोचरू ऐसा साधन हति रे ये रू हडुची ठेवी मनवनी ब्रह्मे सीतया ऐक्याचा समोधनंजया होतसे ते उपाया वो हटू पडे मग वैराग्याची गोंधळुक जे ज्ञानाभ्यासाचे वार्धक्य योग फळाचा ही परिपाक दशा जे का द होली गँग गंगाजी स्लॅकन्स इट स्पीड आफ्टर इट जॉईन्स द सी ऑर एन एमरस वाईफ काम्स डाऊन आफ्टर मीटिंग अर हजबंड अ प्लांट एन स्टॉप्स इट्स ग्रोथ आफ्टर बेअरिंग फ्रूट ऑर अ जर्नी एंड आफ्टर रीचिंग द डेस्टिनेशन so the mind who was seeking has to stop once it reaches the destination this what will be his destination that he doesn't find anything to run away from now <laughs> it was running away from the gross it was running away from the subtle it was running away from the causal now he has got nothing to run away from he has reached the destination when there is nothing to delete shift delete you have reached the destination so how do i know there is enough space in uh, in my computer when i got nothing more to delete isn't it so did i create the space no all i did i how do i know there is uh, uh, one, one terabyte available whatever space whatever was blocking the space i have removed it so what was blocking you to be the infinite ha huh? data data of waking dream deep sleep in that deep sleep there is no data in waking in dream also you delete after you wake up but the waking data you have collected a lot <laughs> understand making data you have collected a lot so it's only one third it's not too much <laughs> it's not too much but we have to delete it but once it is deleted after that now what there is no question of no now what you are there because you are it that that you who has got no data is all that there is that is your destination you use a vehicle to reach a destination i use the car to come here i left the car i reached the destination you use the mind to come to the threshold of reality after that nothing let it go don't hold on i want to continue thinking no the pole vaulter uses the pole vault to reach the heights then jump over no 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 this pole help me to come to such a great height i will not let it go it has to come with me you will have an accident it if you want to win you have to let it go so we have to let go of the seeking in other words we have to get, let go of the mind this is what is told here 
the the momentum of the mind here in lecture the momentum is fantastic <laughs> when we are captivated by a desire the momentum of our mind is even more it's passionately running after what it wants when you come to sleep what happens to your momentum of the mind it slows down in sleep what happens to your momentum of the mind there's no momentum same thing in samadhi same thing in self abidance no momentum means no movement movement is possible where there is two where there is distance distance is always between the two so there is no distance there is no i there is no other so no distance in sleep when you become conscious of this that mind is not running after anything because there is no distance why there is no distance mind is nothing but the self <laughs> mind has surrendered merged into the self as the self so there is no thoughts just as in sleep there are no thoughts there is no thoughts that is samadhi that is fulfillment the holy ganges slackens its speed a uh, speed after it joins the sea or an amorous wife uh, all these examples were taken and uh, and a plantain stops its growth after bearing the fruit so when mind has given the fruit of the it cannot give it can only bring you to a certain point after that the purpose of mind is no longer there just as the vehicle you leave it away in the same way after he knows that he is about to realize the self then he lays down slowly his arms in the form of spiritual practices how will you how will you come to know you will make many mistakes many times you say i think i am realized suddenly you will uh, the world is still there man hunger is still there <laughs> okay start again <laughs> again it will come siddhis will come again you will think you have realized again you will forget again you have to start till you perfect your uh, perfect yourself o oh, arjuna when the uh, so he is about to realize the self then he lays down slowly his arms in the form of spiritual practices it is not suddenly it it's a slow you don't yes you can go suddenly to sleep no doubt but you watch but you will go back you will change into your night clothes you will get put the lights off you will lock the doors you will get into the bed you will get into a correct position all this is a movement towards no movement isn't it the same thing should be in within us also it should not be a sudden jerk because with that sudden jerk you will come out also <laughs> so it should not be a forceful abidance it should it can also happen forceful abidance can also happen forceful samadhi can also happen but that is called a jada samadhi it is not it is not uh, uh, abidance in its true sense when you come out the body identification is still there we want a samadhi that when we come out we continue to be the consciousness we don't want to be the body consciousness see if at all we want to be the all pervasive consciousness not only this body o arjuna when the time comes when he is to attain union with the brahman then his yogic practices come to an end then he attains perfect peace which is the consummation of non attachment the end of the the end of the study of knowledge and the fulfillment of his yogic practices and becomes qualified to become brahman not become brahman be brahman the the scriptures bhagavad gita upanishads panchadashi so all the masters whatever scriptures whether it is the vedas upanishads and the puranas or the uh, mahabharata in which bhagavad gita is found none of the scriptures say 
This is Brahman. They only indicate the reality. Words can only indicate the reality. The teacher, when he is using the words, he can only shift your attention towards the reality that you essentially are. He cannot present you the reality. If at all, maximum, he can give you is, he can give you the experience of totality. By his grace, if he has the power, if he, ha if he is uh, abiding, he can give you the experience of totality. He can give you the experience of vision of God, vision of totality. But that's maximum. He cannot make you realize. You have to realize yourself by knowing I am all that there is. In that the teacher also comes into your <laughs> because if I am teaching this, the thought is also the self and the teacher is also the self. You must also think this way that I, uh, the self that I am, it alone is expressing as the teacher and uh, my mind is the thought. So this teacher who is expressing is the projection of my mind of my mind so that I can learn all this so that I can integrate the mind see this type of approach is required anyway where are we ah, and becomes qualified to be will talk about this a little bit more in our next class we are already over time om purnamada purnamidam purnahat purnam udachate purnasya purnamadaya purnameva vashishyate om shanti 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 hari yo Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha Hari Om Sit for a few moments.